They're the Kambini Boys. They're the Kambini Boys. They're the Kambini. They're the Kambini. They're the Kambini. They're the Kambini Boys. Hey, Mike. Hey, Matt. How's it going? It's going really well, Mike. You know, we were just uh, planning our first trip ever to Top Golf, and so I'm super oh. pumped up. Top Golf, for those who don't know, is just awesome looks like anyway you can play angry birds from the driving range just think about that everybody mm -hmm. so pretty pumped up about uh hitting the top golf with you soon yeah man uh, if we can put this together it'd be awesome and be our first formal time ever playing golf together you know you can be my true mentor you know um <laughs> Uh, yeah, you were just giving me some advice around the greens, you know, um, I was telling you that I was, went out, had a, had a okay round the other day, had a couple tens, you know, mm. and the main problem is I was getting around the, the green, I was just duffing it, you know, duff, 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 and you told me, you know, think about using other clubs, one yard onto the green, let it roll according to the distance of the club, sounds great. And I'm already learning stuff just by talking to you about golf. So I'm really excited about going to Top Golf and uh, knocking a couple strokes off my uh, handicap. It's worth mentioning, I am terrible around the greens, and I've not tried that technique yet. I just watched a YouTube video from a pro <laughs> in Kentucky that I found on the golf subreddit. But I do think it's a worthwhile tip to pursue. Yeah. And you know how I feel about golf tips. I'm a big anti-golf oh, tip guy, so oh, yes, I don't share yes. this just willy I don't just willy-nilly share tips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Anyway, <laughs> all right. <laughs> usual, like, we got a lot to talk about, so what do you say we kick things off here? Yeah, let's do it because Matt, we do have a lot of stuff to talk about. Um so much in fact that we had to cut. I mean, it was a huge cut process um at the beginning of the sure. the episode here. I mean, we had to cut 80% of the stuff we were going to talk about and focus on just this one big thing. Because, Matt, what we've got is, um, I think our longtime listeners will know, one of the pivotal campaigns in our history was the Fine Cheese Grand Prix out of Lawson. Um, uh, one of my favorite campaigns ever. I think yours as well. Um, well, Matt, I'm very excited to let you know that while it is not the Fine Cheese Grand Prix, we do have a cheese fair Tororo cheese, that's oh, yeah. stretchy cheese, coming out of Lawson. So let me um let me show you what we're talking about. And um, so right, Matt, we got the the cheese menu. Um, <laughs> we've got a lot of things coming in with the cheese fair, Tororo Tororo cheese fair, Matt. All right, so I'm gonna run you through the items. We got a big selection this time. This is this is pretty exciting. First off, in the bento bracket, we've got the cheese fondue bento <laughs> okay what's inside there we don't know we got rice and we got some pile of cheese all right matt we've got the the mentai cheese onigiri this is cheese inside of a mentaiko onigiri seems interesting we've got the cheese kimpa this is a uh Yang Yang chicken so this is um some korean style spicy chicken uh stuffed inside of a maki roll stuffed inside of a maki roll i had a blank there for a second i couldn't think what the hell this thing was yeah, called all I right mean, what, yeah i mean what do you call that when you look at <laughs> <laughs> all right matt we've got the cheese um some sort of pasta there's pasta in there matt but we're looking at a bowl full of cheese and red sauce that's pretty pretty interesting pasta there matt we've also got the cheese gratin that's a lot of cheese on the gratin um, with chunks of cheese on there as well. Just gonna keep going here. We've got the tomato soup risotto. Tomato soup risotto, Matt. Um, and you can imagine there's a lot of cheese and stuff going on in there. We've got the topogi iri, uh, sort of nabe style cheese um, dish. We've got the three cheese. Big meat cheese burger. That's a lot of cheese that going on there. The cheese is like the size of a patty. This is an this is an incredible cheese thing going on here. And then we've got the cheese toast, Matt. That's a double cheese. That's pizza toast with. That's a grilled cheese sandwich with cheese melted on top. That mm -hmm. looks amazing. Then we've got the king himself, which we reviewed and was hey pretty good. Um, this is the uh, Karagikun cheese pizza. 
with that new technology. Matt, we've got the fried cheese. That's just fried cheese. Um, we've got the cheese karaoke burger. Um, that is a... It's quite a sight. Um, <laughs> you have to check it out. <laughs> just look it on Google. And then we've got the cheese pizza man, Matt. Um, and then we've also got the Torodi cheese bread, Matt. This is cheese inside of bread. And then we've also got the cheese curry pan, Matt. How many items are in this campaign? We have quite a few, but we we have reached the end. Matt, I think I said cheese at least 50 times while I was talking through all these items. What are you thinking about this cheese fair? Well, Mike, some of these are, are no-brainers. You got the cheeseburger, for instance. You got mm -hmm, the cheese mm -hmm. gratin. You got the cheese pasta. Mm -hmm. you know, these are obviously things that belong in a cheese campaign. Mm -hmm. But they also have, I think, what Lawson would want to describe as innovations, but... I yes. would describe as panicked mm -hmm. brainstorms okay. from a overwhelmed team trying to mm -hmm. hit a deadline. So, yeah. for instance, we got the we got the cheese maki roll here. You got which is which is chunks of fried chicken covered in some spicy Korean sauce mm. with some cheese inside there, melted cheese. We've seen cream cheese like a Philadelphia maki roll here in America. Yeah. This is not yeah. cream cheese, ladies and gentlemen. This is like stretchy, melted, maybe like a mozzarella cheese stuffed in there. So it's sort of like a, a mozzarella mm. stick, but instead of a, a coated breading, we have uh, rice and nori. Yes. Okay. Mm. I, I can't imagine that's any good. Yeah. And then <clears throat> you got something uh, like the like the the oh, geez, I can't even look at these items. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it, this is just bad, Mike. Of all the things you could do with cheese, I just feel like they 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 either are doing the obvious things or doing <laughs> uninteresting things. Yeah, you know, yeah. I really feel like they needed more time to brainstorm and mm -hmm. really hammer this one out. We saw the grand the the, the cheese Grand Prix from two mm -hmm. years ago, for example. Yeah. They had the innovative. Uh, it was like a cheese stuffed dog wrapped mm. in like a crispy potato crust mm -hmm. you bite into yeah. that wiener and the oh, cheese yeah. on the inside stretches out that's yeah. that's innovative that is interesting mm -hmm. i bet mm -hmm. that tastes good you know slapping yeah. a slapping like a half inch of cheese on a hamburger no i'm not gonna not, do it it's gross and i gotta be honest matt yeah i was very disappointed you know the fine cheese grand prix every single one of those was a damn winner and not only was it a winner <laughs> there was a whole twitter voting oh, you yeah. know with that where you could you could vote for your winner and that's when we saw that me meteor meteoric rise of the uh, i think it was the che the cheese dog too cheese I dog think two. It was version two <laughs> yeah. cheese dog two shot up at the end we thought it was dead in the water and you know, almost got to the top. And Matt, I gotta say, yeah, I've I've actually had some of these items already. I don't even. I I think they're they're calling this a campaign, but I think it's fair to say this is just kind of like cheese themes items that are kind of like randomly thrown together. I did have the fried cheese, Matt. I was excited about this because it looks like you a know, mozzarella stick. Should be it a looks mozzarella stick. It looks like a mozzarella stick. Unfortunately, what it was is just like a cold. You know, um, chunk of cheese inside of, you know, like a fried oh, breading. Not great, Matt. Not great at all. Um, I do have to say we did comment about this um, this burger. There, I would like to reiterate the amount of cheese going on on this burger. What it, how much, I mean, look at that. That is, that is a thick cut of cheese on top of there. And then they've got the extra cheese at the bottom. But that burger just looks <laughs> like trash. Man. I don't know what. Yeah, that burger. The texture of that burger. I think there's yeah. a lot of, there are a lot of breadcrumbs in that burger. Yes, when you yes. Buy, when, you, when you see pet food, it's like no grain pet food. Yeah. I don't think this is, this is, this is not a no grain burger here. No, no. Yeah. And I got to say, and also just kind of a final point, like, you can't just throw the ch the pizza classic man. pizza man in there. What are you talking about? It's nothing special. But I mean, this is the pizza man. What are you just gonna pick up everything that has cheese in the whole damn store and say it's part of a campaign? Not liking it, Matt. 
So, um, yeah, I got to say, Lawson, we, ex- you know, we, we expect better out of you. Um, recently, it's been 7-Eleven coming with those killer campaigns. So They have a hope- killer. Well, we had to cut this from the show, but they have a killer regional noodle campaign right now where they're featuring some of the best ramen shops in Japan yeah. as instant noodles. I mean, some yeah. of the top names out there. So everybody should go check that out. Yeah, yeah, really. Um, 7-Eleven. Killer campaign, it's true. Yeah, man, quite a sight to see. What a what a what a turnaround. All right, Mike. It's uh, you know, sad to say, no no new chickies out this week. We're in episode mm. ninety eight, believe it or not, <laughs> and maybe this is the sixth time we've not had a new chickie to announce. Yeah. yeah. Although I don't know, we already talked about the pizza kara yes. last week, so that doesn't count. Okay. On to the new item scoreboard. Let's take a look at the numbers this week. Mike, Family Mart, 43. Excuse me, 43 new items. Lawson, 23. 7 Eleven, 147. Mini Stop, 24. Daily Yamazaki, 8. Seiko Mart, 7. New Days, 20. Thoughts on those numbers, Mike? Matt, a um, little low there. Family Mart, Lawson, 43, 23. What's going on here? This is the big, this is a prime time. You know, we're preparing for Christmas and we're going to be talking about it next week. This is Christmas season. This is when you've really got to be pumping out items. So I hope that they're going to, you know, take a long, hard look in the mirror next week and, you know, and really put put their foot on the pedal because we need more items. If there's anything we need, it's more items. (laughs) I've said it better myself. All right, let's take a look at our winners and losers this week. Mike, always excited to see what you got here for the loser. Oh, no. (laughs) All right. (laughs) All right, Matt. Let me tell you what this is. This is the cheeseburger, Matt. This is out of 7-Eleven. And it's very hard um, to describe what is what is unfortunate about this. I mean, it's a cheeseburger. It's everything is advertised. What do you got? You got bread. You got your cheese. <laughs> you got your burger. And that's about it, Matt. It's a 250 yen uh, cheeseburger here. Matt, rarely have I seen a burger with this... With this level of, of, of meat to bread ratio, Matt, this is like a Cro Magnon style <laughs> like top of a head to this to this uh, this burger here. I mean, that's got to be. I, I, we're talking a ratio of, of one to nine bread to burger. Not to mention, what's going on with this cheese, Matt? That's a piece of American cheese. Mm-hmm. It's cold. It's not been melted. This is, uh, man, it's, they're really stretching the limits of what you can call a cheese burger. I think maybe this be better be called like a cheese, cheese bread or a cheese burger bread or something like that. Um, <clears throat> Matt, I don't know what it was, but I just, I couldn't stop laughing when I saw this item. So yeah, this is my loser for the week. You're right, Mike. I actually, I actually think I've seen this bun grow just looking at the image here it's almost like a hot air balloon the size of this this top bun it's true questioning the questionable angle they chose to to shoot this at because you get you can barely see the burger normally you get like a nice profile shot so you can see all the layers 7-eleven did not go for that technique um no and then yeah the craft single there unmelted not very Mm -hmm. appetizing and no. um, hold the pickles, hold the lettuce. Hold it all. Hold it all. <laughs> There's nothing on this thing. Yeah, that's about as simple as it gets there. Yep. All right, reasonable. I, I almost picked another cheeseburger item, so it would have been a tough oh, day boy. for cheeseburgers today. Family Mart yeah. has a cheeseburger sushi out this week that is oh. very questionable. Yes. <clears throat> but instead, I went for... Um, one for the onion gratin soup, Mike. This is also out of Seven Eleven, and I'll tell you what we're looking at here. We got we got croutons, Mike. We got some big chunks of croutons somewhere below those croutons. I guess there's soup somewhere. And then you have, um, you know, it looks like somebody took a shotgun, stuffed some uh, cheddar cheese in there, and just blasted it. And some of it hit the croutons. Most of it didn't. 
<laughs> and uh, you know, Mike, this this kind of makes you question everything because I know what French onion soup is supposed to be. Oh yeah, this is, French onion soup is delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You get that rich, sweet onion with the rich broth, and then that big chunk of baguette all soggy, and then the mm. the the Gruyere cheese brulee on top, and you're just getting oh, cheese God. and bread. And what the hell is this? You know, the French. You show a, a Frenchman this, they'd be they'd be horrified. They'd probably smack you over the head with a bottle of Bordeaux. <laughs> See this thing. So it makes you question how how accurate the uh, any sort of non-Japanese food is coming out of the conveni. You know. Yeah, yeah, Matt. This is um, onion gratin soup, Matt. Um, yeah, this is just if your first impression on looking this would be this is just a, a bowl of of bread of bread chunks. Um, no sight of the the soup to be seen. The cheese and, like you said, shotgun on there. I mean, it, it almost looks like some sort of like fungal infection. <laughs> you know, there's some, some. There's not much going on here, Matt. Um, and it's a shame. This is because this is the sort of item that the Kumini could knock out of the park. And I don't. Seven Eleven. I like where they're going, but they just are way, way off from what, where they're trying to get. Plus the price. It's almost 100 yen more than that cheeseburger we were just looking at. Which Jesus makes you wonder, Christ. okay, really, how much bread is in that cheese? It's got to be all bread in that cheese. Yeah, Matt. I went to, well, I went to Shikoku for a business trip recently. And I got a small udon there, 250 yen, Matt. And that's Jesus as good as Christ. it gets. 250 yen. Compare oh that to God. this... To this uh, Onion rotten <laughs> soup. And with the Tough. exchange rate right now, that's like a dollar for that yeah. bullet. Oh, my God. Amazing. All right, let's move into the winner's yep. circle here, Mike. Let's see what you mm-hmm. got this week's winner. Yep. Oh, more soup. Yep. Matt, here we go. This come back to a f- familiar theme that we've uh, we've gone over many times. You know, this, I don't mind to harp. But Matt, this is the um, the tomato minestrone soup, Matt. And I just gotta say, look at all those vegetables in there. That looks just outstanding. What do you got in there? What have you got? We got corn, we got onion, we got some sort of beans, we got bacon, we got tomato, we got some parsley, I guess. See We've got Parmesan cheese on there. Parmesan cheese, I think. We've got... Um, you know, potato. We we've got it all. And Matt, you know what you don't see on this item? You don't see anywhere <laughs> anywhere at all is any sort of claim of half a day's vegetables, a full day's vegetable. You know, this is just a this is just a straight shooter, Matt. So what this is my winner this week because I'm gonna show people what a dish that actually has a good amount and a good variety of vegetables looks like at the kombini and also a way to do it well you know soups i think are great ways to um get a lot of vegetables and especially like in you know the in the kombini um because otherwise you just get these like sad you know if they're not in a soup they're just kind of like either in a salad or just you know just boiled cabbage in like a bowl or something so anyways matt um yeah hey this is uh just um this is what it looks like, folks. This is what a good amount of vegetables looks like at the Kamini. This looks really good, actually. I mean, I'm yeah. not even thinking about the amount of it. This just looks like good soup. You got a lot of colors. You got the yellow from the corn. You got the pink from mm-hmm. the bacon. You got the black from the beans. You got the green from the parsley. You got the red yeah. from the tomato and the soup. Exactly. Yes. I mean, this is just a, a, a inviting you to take a big a big big old spoon and hammer mm-hmm. this down also a really good reminder mm-hmm. you know we we feature a lot of junk food here sure on the podcast but the convenient you can actually eat very healthy coming out of the convenient there's yeah. no reason you need to eat just boneless fried chicken strong zeros you can go in there find some nice soup find some nice salad onigiri mm-hmm. you know with some pickles in it plenty of stuff to eat at the convenient to keep you healthy keep you going and yeah. this here is a fine example of that. And I do appreciate, like you said, Mike, they're not making bogus claims that this is not a, a half day or no. full day's worth of vegetables. Well, so probably it may very well be a half yeah. day. 
Yeah, I would say. All right, Mike. My my winner this week is coming out of seven eleven. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. this is the uh, holy <sighs> ho- holy basil <laughs> smelling mm-hmm. parikara kapau rice. Mm-hmm. I only care about one thing, Mike. I don't care about. I don't even know what gapau is. I know <laughs> rice is. I care about is this egg. I think that's a poached egg. That mm-hmm. looks like a poached egg to me. Looks good. It's a damn good looking poached egg. It looks like if you were to put a chopstick in there, it would be quite runny, mm-hmm. but still mm-hmm. solid. You know, the mm-hmm. whites are nice and firm, soft, mm-hmm. yolk, very runny. Oh. And, um, you know, it's hard to poach a single egg, Mike. We all have our techniques. I have my own technique. I'll tell you what it is. Okay. Now, we've all watched many YouTube videos to acquire our own techniques. <laughs> My journey began with the amateur gourmet, probably back in 2006, where you swirl the water, you turn off the heat, a little bit of white vinegar in there, and then you hope and pray things turn out the way you want them to. And they rarely do. Yeah. Maybe the egg doesn't come together quite as well as you had hoped. Maybe mm-hmm. you overcook it by a smidge because that that's the easiest thing to do with a poached egg. Mm-hmm. Right now... You know, I like to three minutes heat off mm-hmm. after bring the water to a boil. Again, swirl, white vinegar. It's usually yeah. pretty good. But yeah. Mike, if 7-Eleven thinks they're going to produce thousands of these gao pao chickens with perfectly mm-hmm. poached eggs, I think we've entered a new culinary epoch because mm-hmm. how, how, how are they going to perfectly poach thousands and thousands of eggs? I mean, that would be a true innovation yeah. in the kitchen. I, w- I would be stunned by that. How many Top Chef contestants have been undone mm-hmm. by either a soft-boiled or a poached egg on their dish? Too many. Too many. The bodies are piled too high to count them. <laughs> so if they've managed to pull this off, I'll, I'm very impressed. And they have three dishes this week, Mike, three, that all feature what looks to be a perfectly poached egg yeah all right matt well first off i gotta say i looked i took a long hard look at this this dish as well um i'd say in japan kapao rice is maybe one of the more popular uh thai foods um and it's just great i mean it's like you know it's thai so it's a little bit spicy it's sweet um and that yeah that poached egg on top but i would like to say for our listeners especially those in America. I don't know the rest of the world, but um, in America, eggs are sort of this thing that you kind of got to like fear, you know, like you got to cook them well, you got to get them, you know. I got to say in Japan, well, then two things. First off, in Japan, you can eat raw egg like, yeah, people eat raw egg like it's going out of style. You can just, uh, you don't have to be rocky. You just wake up and just eat a, a raw egg. But I will got to say the level of like, egg craftsmanship in japan (laughs) is out of this world i mean in in the states yeah like maybe what do you have you have like a a a fried egg a poached egg a soft-boiled egg i mean this is a whole like range of possible states of the egg so um i i gotta say matt i think that 7-eleven is going to be pulling this off with that great egg each time for each you know, 10,000 of these items that they sell. Um, and if they do, this is going to be whew, beautiful, beautiful dish. Oh, man, just looks amazing. That's a great point about eggs in Japan, Mike. I will mm-hmm. say the, the only reason I go on TikTok, mm-hmm. which is run by the Chinese Communist Party, everybody don't forget about that, <laughs> is to see <laughs> this guy, this Omer Rice master, and he does oh. one kind of video. He does oh. one kind of video. <laughs> and he's just cooking that omu rice. No. He's doing the he's doing the handle thing, banging oh. the handle, getting it shaped. He he lays it on the rice, then he grabs the knife and <laughs> slices that boy open and just spills its guts out. Oh, it's so beautiful. 
but that, <sighs> you're right, Mike. Who? That is a that is a level of mastery that truly only the Jap, even the French, have not achieved. I'll say, no. even the French <laughs> who invented the omelet, I think, have not <laughs> achieved that level of mastery. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right. That wraps up our winners and losers, Mike. <laughs> Yes, it does. What do, well, Matt, what do we got going on this week? I got to say, I'm really excited, you know, returning after it's been a couple, probably 10 episodes or so. Matt, if, if I'm understanding correctly, we've got something coming out of Matt's munchies this week. Is that right? That's right, Mike. And, you know, maybe Matt's munchies is going to pick up soon because um, just moved to Maine as I announced a couple of weeks ago on the podcast and it turns out the cannabis industry in Maine is kind of like the wild wild west I, I believe you need a no license <laughs> to open a uh, a retail cannabis shop here in Maine so you know I went into one the other week it, this thing was like a Rolex shop I swear to god they, it was just stunning but the guy working the counter you know he was lights were half on definitely the dimmer switch you know <laughs> as he was walking me through the menu um, so anyway, really enjoying that part of the, the culture here. Mm -hmm. um, but Mike, I'm here today to talk mm -hmm. about Shake Shack. Okay. And Shake Shack, I was actually having this conversation with a, with a colleague, a younger colleague recently, top, top fast food in America. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was between, I got three, I got Popeyes, I got Chick-fil-A, and I got Shake, Shake, Shake Shack. Mm-hmm. And recently, Shake Shack has partnered not Long with... John Silver's, not Long not yet, John not Silver's. Not yet been to Long John Silver's. I don't think they'd right, survive sorry. here in New England, Mike. Sorry to interrupt you. I, I, I was hard to maintain. <laughs> All right, sorry. Please, please continue. <laughs> I'm sort of drunk. Okay, sorry. <laughs> but Shake Shack, Mike, has partnered with Hot Wheels, <sighs> which I understand to be. The guy on YouTube who eats yes. hot chicken wings with celebrities, oh, which is a man. surprisingly interesting interview format. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But, Mike, <clears throat> I had the Hot Ones burger, which has Hot Ones, spicy Shake Shack sauce, crispy <clears throat> applewood smoked bacon, and Monterey Jack cheese on a toasted tomato bottom. And we're looking at the image here, Mike. Uh, Shake Shack, I would say, is uh, famous, is, is accurate in how they show the burger in the marketing materials and how it actually appears. This is very close to how the burger appeared. Now, really? It's beautiful. It's oh, beautiful. Oh, it's stunning. And let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. I love the Shake Shack's Smoke Shack. That's their bacon burger. It is mm -hmm. so good. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why it's so good. Is it the perfect potato bun that's soft and chewy? Mm -hmm. Is it because the bacon is thick cut and smoky? Is it because the patty is a little smashed and a little crispy? It's all those things combined, of course. But now they're topping it with the hot one sauce, Mike. And I got to say, I think they nailed the heat profile. I like spicy stuff. Mm -hmm. But you got to consider they're trying to sell this. To a big audience so they got to yes. hit a profile that's reasonable for people and i think they nailed it you know i didn't walk away feeling like oh that's way too much heat but i wasn't disappointed by it either which is mostly what happens you're disappointed by the heat shake shack mm -hmm. brought the heat just enough and it was a kind of heat that 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 sort of it's like a wave that that rolls over your whole palate you know it doesn't just hit the point the tip of your tongue or something like this yeah, it comes yeah. on slowly and just sort of arrives, and it's there and it's good, stunning. I thought this was fantastic. Shake Shack, another home run. Congratulations. Mm. There's you, a cheese. There's a cheeseburger. Down. There's a cheeseburger. There is a cheeseburger. Can you scroll down? I think there are a couple other items. What's that? That's a chicken. <laughs> That's the chicken. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I've actually have been disappointed by the chicken sandwiches at Shake Shack historically, so I always stick with the burger. And then they got mm -hmm. the fries, the cheese, hot ones, cheese fries. Shake Shack fries are awesome. Crinkle cut fries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice and crispy. Mm -hmm. Crinkle cut means if you want to dip, 
you get a lot of sauce adherence. Ooh, now, for yes. comparison, I will say, I recently went to Wendy's. First time in who knows how long since I was a little mm-hmm. kid. And yeah. I did get the I did get some fries with the ghost pepper ranch sauce, which yes. was so gross. I I I could only handle two bites. I, I think it was almost purely palm oil <laughs> with like a hint of, of hot pepper essence. I mean it was disgusting. Truly, truly bad. But my Junior bacon cheeseburger, I will say, was quite good. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of, you know, the original spicy chicken sandwich, if we're being honest, it's Wendy's. You know, oh, go. All true? right, all right. Well, no, no. I mean, this is a different sort of spicy chicken. All right, Matt. Sorry, can you just go back up to that top? That one. Oh my god. <laughs> it looks so damn good. I. Matt, I, I really can't say anything. I was really stunned and um, breath, you know, um, speechless as you were describing this, and just salivating. It looks amazing. So you, if you were to put a, a star rating oh, on this, yeah, five five out of five. In fact, I would I would go six out of five. If <laughs> had I had my dairy pills, I would have gotten the. Um, I think they had like an apple pie, uh, like milk milkshake they're they're always doing seasonal milkshakes at shake shack but i didn't i would have shit my pants (laughs) so i didn't but um yeah if you're looking to fill your 2000 calories in one sitting the hot ones cheeseburger with some fries and an apple pie milkshake ain't a bad way to do it Mm. yeah well matt while i am happy for you i'm Sad for myself and <laughs> sort of regretting not living in the state so I could have this. It looks so good. Um, wow, man. All right. Well, um, hopefully the Kumbini can someday match that level of burger. It's going to probably be, buckle in, I mean, 25 years before they can reach that, that level, I'm guessing. Who knows? But it, it should happen. It needs to happen. It, it, you know, they're, they're, they're capable. It could. It could, yeah, you're right. Maybe there will be some huge, like, wave of innovation. Maybe it's only, you know, a couple years away. Anyway. Maybe. All right. (laughs) That wraps up episode 98 here, Mike. Thanks to everybody for listening, and a special thanks to those who have bought us a chickie over the years. If you want to support the podcast, head over to buymeacoffee.com slash conveniboys. You can also check out our newsletter, which I haven't really been publishing recently, but I'll get back on that at conveniboys.substack.com. Please share and rate the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, where you get podcasts. And uh, check us out. Subscribe on YouTube if you want to see all these all these things we're talking about. And then uh, join the dumb conversation on Twitter. We recently passed 4,000 followers, Ooh. which was exciting. We're up to 4,200, so we'll keep climbing. Maybe even go for one of those blue check marks everybody's talking about these days, which I don't quite understand it, but... I guess, hey. a, I guess it's a thing. Yes. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And, uh, Mike, I'll see you at the convenience. See you at the convenience, Matt.